Welcome, brothers and sisters in the Squatch. Today's sermon is on Thou Shall Not Bear False Witness. Dr. Meldrum, Mr. Munns, and Mr. Moneymaker all chime in on the Matilda picture, and it seems they do not agree with each other whatsoever. Apparently, Reverend Jeff has struck a nerve with some of the congregation, and, well, all I can say to that is, good. I've been following the Erickson Project debacle for as long as it's been wrapped up with the Ketchum DNA farce for a few years now. It seems only an elite few have been privileged enough to see all of the Erickson footage, and Dr. Meldrum was one of them. It also seems quite a few people were invited to the location in Kentucky at different times to view the amazing footage that is the Erickson Project. There are reports of many, many hours of footage once Erickson had purchased the property, but ran out of funding and the filmmakers kept the footage, and at the moment, it's not even sure where it's located or if it even exists. So let's step back a moment and let's give a little history of all the footage that's actually involved here. It seems Erickson was contacted by a couple that owned a one-acre piece of land with a house on it in rural Kentucky. Their claim was that a clan of Bigfoot were living on their property, and would he be interested in buying some footage of living Bigfoot? At the time, Adrian Erickson was a wealthy land developer with a Bigfoot project on the side. Erickson jumped at the chance. He made sure to wrap the couple up and agreed to fund them if they could provide video proof. If they were Bigfoot on their property, he would take care of them in the meantime. The couple agreed, and Mr. Erickson began receiving short clips from the couple in Kentucky as proof that they weren't lying. One of these short clips was the sleeping Bigfoot of the recent DNA paper release. It was roughly 30 seconds long, but only showed the animal sleeping. It never revealed a face or hands but Mr. Erickson found it very compelling. This went on for some time as Erickson received other short clips of Bigfoot activity that the video that Matt Moneymaker was talking about on the After Hours podcast. It seemed that Erickson was hooked now, and after a while, the couple took and produced the Matilda footage as close-up face of the fact that Bigfoot's face was real. That, it seemed, was the key. Erickson made a bid on the property with the house included and purchased it from the landowners. The intent was to place real video researchers on the site to get a longer and better video from that location. This is where the missing footage comes into play. It seems the video researchers were living on the location, managed to ruin their professional image, and well, they screwed the pooch, along with all the other footage which seems now to be missing. The debate has been open now that these pictures have been released to the internet. There is no getting them back. Just ask every debutante with a panty shot on TMZ. It just doesn't happen. Once the Matilda picture was released, it seems Bill Munns, the famous videographer, started to really take a look at the image of Matilda's face. There are a series of images that show different looks and comparisons to a Wookiee mask of Chewbacca from Star Wars. I must admit myself, there sure seems to be some similarities. Matt Moneymaker chimed in on the picture and announced to the Twitter world that Matilda is not indeed a Wookiee mask. She is real, and even Dr. Bendernagel has been to the site and saw the animals firsthand. They were living, breathing Bigfoot. Now chimes in Dr. Meldrum, the one of the most respected people in our field. He doesn't let loose with his comments. He knows how damning they can be, yet he even felt compelled enough to talk about the Bigfoot evidence post that reported on Bill Munn's breakdown by saying, appears Bill has gone public on this. He showed the comparison to me during the last visit there. I had seen the footage briefly during my visit to Kentucky years ago. It was not what I would have expected, and yet there was something familiar about it. Since I wasn't at liberty to discuss it and I had no opportunity to review it, it was simply tucked away in my vague recess of memory. When Bill showed me his chart, the penny dropped. It was all too clear. Dr. Meldrum was referring to the Chewbacca mask and Matilda side-by-side -side comparison photo. From my understanding of his post, it seems that he would agree that at least the Matilda footage is not for what it has been portrayed to be. Many people have been silenced with non-disclosure agreements and are locked up by threat of legal action from speaking about the wannabe famous Erickson project. However, Bill Munn sets the challenge. He said, if my display of this chart causes anyone to feel that they should file some type of civil action against me, please have your lawyer contact me at his email address so we can set an appointment for my receiving of the service papers and we can discuss the matter on public record in a court. Amen, Bill. Let the cards fall where they may. So which is it? Do we side with Erickson and Moneymaker that the footage is 100% legit so that Adrian Erickson demanding removing of the Matilda picture, or do we side with 95% of the rest of the Bigfoot world along with Dr. Meldrum and Bill Munns? I've been trying to reserve judgment on the footage as I've not seen it firsthand. I'm starting to think that the ones that feel that it is real need it to be real so bad that they're willing to go out on a limb in a hopes that it pans out in the end. I'm having a very difficult time doing so right now. I'm hoping that the documentary is at least entertaining if it doesn't contain real Bigfoot. Perhaps he bit off more of the Ketchum crap stick than he should have. I'll keep my eye on this one. Until next time, I'm Reverend Jeff, and may the Squatch be with you. Team Taser approved! <laughs>